Thank you for tuning in to Meaning Beyond Measure, A Look Between the Staves. I'm your host, Ben Peterson. The purpose of this podcast is to dive deep into music, to share the story behind the sonnet, to explore the conundrums composers faced, and ultimately to discover new meaning in the music we make. In today's episode, we'll explore Coventry Carol, one of our oldest Christmas carols. This piece is also sometimes known as Luli, Lula, Lule. Luli, Lula, Lule. Uh, each of these obsolete words are derived from the word lul or lulin, which means to calm or hush to sleep. Lulin is also where the modern word lullaby comes from. And although this song is a lullaby, it's probably the saddest lullaby ever conceived. To understand this, let's go back to where this lullaby was first performed. This lullaby was part of a nativity pageant held in Coventry, England, uh, titled Pageant of the Shearmen and Tailors. Now, unlike our modern nativities, which usually end with Christ's birth, this nativity continued the scriptural account found in Matthew chapter 2. Following the visit of the Magi, Joseph is warned by an angel in a dream that he needs to take Mary and the young Christ child and flee into Egypt. Herod the king is then enraged, and in his depraved pursuit of the Christ child, he gives the monstrous decree to kill all the male babies in Bethlehem, aged two years and younger. So after Joseph leaves the stage in this rendition, three women enter, and on stage they sing Coventry Carol as a final lullaby to their babies. The oldest surviving copy of their heart-rending words dates all the way back to 1534. Here are those first lyrics, beginning with the refrain, which is often repeated between the verses. Luli, Lula, thou little tiny child. Bye-bye, Luli, Lule, thou little tiny child. Bye-bye, Luli, Lule. O sisters too, how may we do for to preserve this day, this poor young ling for whom we sing? Bye bye, Luli Lule. Herod the king, in his raging, charged he hath this day, his men of might in his own sight, all young children to slay. That woe is me, poor child for thee, and ever mourn. And may for thy parting neither say nor sing. Bye-bye, Luli Lule. The words haven't changed much since this first recorded rendition, although some small variants include these lyrics, uh, and ever mourn and say, or and ever mourn that day, referring to the day when Herod massacred those innocent children. This tragic parting lullaby ends, oddly enough, with a Picardy third. A Picardy third is something you sometimes find at the end of minor pieces, where instead of ending on a minor chord, as we'd expect, the third of the chord will be raised, making us end on a major chord. It's almost as if the melodist wanted to end with a note of hope way back in 1591. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's all fine and good to end on a major chord, but it doesn't begin to compensate for the sorrowful music nor the imagery of these Bethlehem mothers who lost their children. How in the world did this become a Christmas carol? Well, to answer that, let's revisit Coventry, England, fast-forwarding a few centuries to the year 1940 in the midst of World War II. On the eve of November 14th, 1940, 515 Nazi bombers covered the skies of Coventry, England. The Nazis called this attack Operation Moonshein Sonata, or Operation Moonlight Sonata. You can just see, you can just see Beethoven rolling over in his grave at this. The Nazis targeted the factories of Coventry, but by releasing almost 30,000 incendiary bombs, they decimated the entire city. It's impossible to know the full extent of the damage that was caused that night, but official records state that over 40,000 homes were damaged or destroyed, over a thousand people were injured, and more than 500 souls were lost that night. These heavy casualties were buried together in a mass grave. Lives were shattered, 
factories were demolished, hospitals and the police station lay in ruins, and their beloved Coventry Cathedral, a medieval church, was reduced to a roofless shell. In the weeks following, Coventry sought to repair what they could, but the holiday season looked like it would be anything but merry and bright. It just seemed wrong to go from bombshells to jingle bells. But, but on Christmas morning, the community gathered in the rubble of their cathedral. Their priest, Provost Howard, delivered an address where he preached of hope and forgiveness. Here are some of his words, quote, Early this Christmas morning, here under these ruins, in the lovely little stone chapel built 600 years ago, we began the day with our Christmas communion, worshipping the Christ, believe me, as joyfully as ever before. What we want to tell the world is this, that with Christ born again in our hearts today, we are trying, hard as it may be, to banish all thoughts of revenge. We are going to try to make a kinder, simpler, a more Christ-childlike sort of world in the days beyond this strife. Then, in the ruins of that cathedral, the choir sang this Coventry carol, which they broadcasted out to the world. Together they sang, together they mourned, and true to the priest's words, together they forgave. Just two years after the war, Coventry Church partnered with a church in Kiel, Germany, and later in Dresden to promote peace and goodwill. They could have been bitter at those who were once their enemies, but instead they chose to extend a hand of fellowship and forgiveness. A new church was built in Coventry, beside the ruins. But every Friday, people gather together, still to this day, in those ruins, and they offer a prayer for peace. There on a ruined wall just behind the altar are two words which Provost Howard had inscribed. Father, forgive. As we head into this Christmas season, I hope that your celebrations are merry and bright. But if, if for whatever reason, you feel weighed down by sorrow, I, I hope that you'll find some solace in Coventry Carol. You're not alone in your sorrow. There are those that want to lift you, and there are also those that you can lift in return. I know it's impossible to imagine the sorrow that those mothers in Bethlehem faced, but the joy of Christmas is this, that because Christ bore all our sorrows, Christ can also erase our sorrow. Because of him, no failure is final, no loss is permanent, and no one is beyond his reach. Through him, you can find the strength to forgive, and you can also experience the peace and the joy that come from being forgiven. Let the lullaby of Coventry Carol help you, so that you can put to bed some sorrow and then awaken, renewed and bright, alive in Christ and in the joy of this Christmas season. Thank you for listening to this pilot episode of Meaning Beyond Measure. If you know someone who could use a little comfort or inspiration this Christmas season, please share this message with them. Let the tales of Coventry Carol lift them up. I'm Ben Peterson. Thanks for discovering with me Meaning Beyond the Music.